We're going to build on the foundation of our limits that we've been talking about in the last few lessons, and we're going to build the idea of the derivative. And the derivative is a really big concept in calculus. There is a whole part of calculus called differential calculus, which is based on this idea of the derivative. So the limit gave birth to a whole lot more mathematics than just the limit itself. When mathematicians were exploring the idea of nearness, where you could be near something, but not at a certain location or a certain value in the plane, it led to exploration concerning average versus instantaneous. Let's say we go a distance on this curve. Here is the curve in the plane, the function f of x. If we go a distance from x, a distance of h, we are at a new location on the horizontal axis, a distance of h in the plane horizontally. If we put a point on our curve f of x, we'll call it q. This point has an x-coordinate of x plus h and a y-coordinate of f of x plus h. We can clearly see that the coordinates for point P are x, f of x. We have two unique points in the plane. We have point P and we have point Q. If we were to draw a line through P and Q, this would be the secant line. A line through any two points is a secant line. Here on our curve F, we have a secant line drawn through points P and Q. We could find the slope of that line. Slope is a little m. I'm going to use a subscript of s for the slope of the secant line by taking the difference in the output values over the difference in the input values. We learned in pre-algebra, we call this rise over run. Rise is the difference vertically, run is the difference horizontally, and we can see that this is evidenced by the difference between our vertical variables and our horizontal variables. So particularly for this setup, if we wanted the slope of the secant line that we've drawn through the points P and Q, we're going to use our knowledge of rise over run and we're going to write the slope of the secant line, the formula for that, using the coordinates of point P and the coordinates of point Q. You'll see in a while why we are going to do that. So the slope of the secant line through P and Q is the difference in the outputs. There's the output at Q and the output at P. That is y2 minus y1. That's going to be over the difference in the inputs of those functions. That's x2 minus x1. That will give us rise over run. That will give us the slope of this line. Well, why do we care? Why do we care about the slope of a line through two points? because the slope of a line through any two pieces of data, and points are pieces of data, inputs and outputs, models average rate of change. And mathematically, average rate of change is very helpful. 
if we know the average rate of, let's say, travel, we could have two data points that were positioned at any given time. We could have time one and time two. If we recorded our position, I'm going to call that P at both of those different times, there are two data pieces, two pieces of data. If I were to find the slope through those two pieces of data, that would be the average rate of change of my position. That would be my average velocity. The slope of the secant line through those two points would be my average velocity. So mathematicians began to ask themselves, if we can get infinitely close with the idea of the limit, just brainstorming one day, they said, the limit says we're not at, we're near. So if I could take one of these points and make it very, very, very near the other one, how near? Well, arbitrarily near, however near you want me to get. If I can get near, but not at, then I still have two separate points. And I can talk about slope through those two separate points. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up this distance h, and we're going to make it go to zero. We are going to move the point Q closer to P. We're going to follow the curve. We still have secant lines all the way. As we move Q closer to P, we see that the slope of the secant line is changing because we have different data points. So I'm taking that distance H to zero. It is getting very, 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 very close to P, Q is, but it is going to be different from P. So as I take the distance H in the plane to zero, I have two unique points. I still have P and Q, but they are occupying a space very, very, very close to one another. And this approximates or models the slope of the tangent line. Now I have a tangent line that intersects my curve f of x at, for all practical purposes, only one point. I only have one piece of data just one piece of data. Could I find the slope of the tangent line using just one piece of data, just one input and its corresponding output? Well, I can using the idea of the limit. And this is brilliant because the slope of the tangent line models something different than the slope of the secant line. If I have the difference in the outputs, which we said we had for slope of the secant line, over the difference in the inputs, that's rise over run. Two unique points in the plane. They just happen to be occupying almost the same position in the plane. If I take the difference in my input values, which, by the way, algebraically cleans up to a value of h. So if I take that distance h to 0, now I'm going to have the slope of the tangent line, 1 point, 1 point one piece of data. That's huge. That is no longer average. 
that's instantaneous. That's at one input value. If we can model change as it occurs, if we don't need two input values to determine what is happening at any given time, we no longer have to talk about averages, we can talk about instantaneous. The rates that things are changing, whether it's position, whether it's volume, whether it's daylight, the rate at which things are changing instantaneously. And that's what we get with the slope of the tangent line. And that's what we have here. We have the slope of the tangent line modeled with one function. This has its own name. It's called the derivative, the foundation for differential calculus. This is the definition of the derivative. It is average rate of change made into instantaneous rate of change inside the idea of the calculus limit. We have two points in the plane occupying for all practical purposes the same space, but they're two unique separate points and we can use those points to find the slope of the line that intersects them. It just so happens that there's only one point in the plane that intersects them. It's the point P. If I take H to zero, then x and x plus h are occupying the same horizontal place along the independent variable axis. As well, f of x and f of x plus h are occupying the same space. In the idea of the limit, I am not at. I am near and that follows from the idea of the denseness of the real number line.